Hi everyone, I'm here with uh, Kevin Jones from S City University London's School of Software Reliability. He's a professor there. And uh, I want to thank you for coming back and visiting us once again this year at Info Security Europe. Very happy to. Excellent. Um, so, I, first of all, I want to ask you, um, what are the sort of things we might find if we came over and visited the uh, City University stand? Uh, what are the sort of topics you're touching upon and uh, talking about with the uh, attendees? Okay, so basically we're talking about, it's really two things. The teaching we're doing, particularly at the master's level, the master's in information security and risk, mm -hmm. And then we're also very interested in talking to people about our Center for Cybersecurity Sciences, which is a multidisciplinary research grouping brought together from across the university. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, how are you finding the show so far and the traffic coming by? It's, it's interesting. Um, as always, you know, in a show of this magnitude, you wander around and you find a few things that attract your attention, then you get overwhelmed by the sheer number of things here. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's interesting that there's definitely a buzz there are lots of people here, there's lots of excitement. Mm -hmm. People are clearly still very interested in recent technological developments in the security field. You know, the, the big companies are still here, but I always find it's fascinating to wander around the edges and look at the little companies who maybe have something novel, something unique. Right. And this is a great place to do that, actually. Have you found anything unique that's uh, piqued your interest? So, today's the first day, which means I'm still wandering in a kind of random walk. Uh -huh. So, my aim is now to find things and think, I really must go back and talk to those people. Right. So, nothing specific yet, but uh -huh. a few more I have to go back and revisit. All right. And uh, as you mentioned, obviously, at City University, uh, you have a Master's in Information Security program. Uh, what are you finding as far as enrollees? Um, the volume, the quality of the candidates that you're receiving? So we have a particularly niche aimed degree. We're aiming for people who are looking to get to sort of the CISO level within their career. So our program is intended to be a blend of technology, particularly technology management, and then the business applications of that technology, being able to basically relate the hard technical problems in the context of what does it mean to a business, who needs to know about it, how do you, commu how do you communicate it. Mm -hmm. So that's a fairly new market. Traditionally, education in cybersecurity has very much been hands-on technical. So we realized there was, sort of, there was a need for something, if you like, the next level up from that. Mm -hmm. So we launched our program last year. We have our first cohort going through now. What we're finding, particularly today, is people are now looking specifically for that degree. You know, we've managed to communicate what it is we do, what it's for, where it fits. And it does seem that people have accepted the idea that, yeah, that's different, that's what I want, that fits for me. So we're actually very encouraged. We're getting the right kind of people, right. which is exactly what we're looking for. And these people, um, I'm imagining that a lot of them are techies, but certainly not all of them. We get a mix. We get people who've been working in the technical end of the industry and want to move up to the management ladder. Mm. We also get people who've been in the industry for a long time. Actually often have no academic credentials behind them, but have a lot of practical experience and sort of real world on the job learning. Mm. So they're looking for a way to bring that all together. And again, a professional master's program is often a very good choice for that kind of person too. Right, and then so in this program you have course matter, I would imagine, that plays to developing business skills? Yeah, so we, we try to find a balance between things that are specific to the information security space, mm -hmm. you know, things like information security, sort of technical um, topics, the common body of knowledge, those kind of things. But then at the other end, things like presentation, business analysis, understanding risk, how to do audit, the consequences of not doing those things, not from a technical perspective, but from a business perspective. Mm -hmm. Those are all part of the material we teach. Yeah. And so you would think it's important to make the connection between the security needs and the business needs in your coursework. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things we find talking to very senior people in government, very senior people in industry, when you say what we are trying to do is to give you a person who can talk to the techies and know what he's talking about, but talk to you and you can know what he's talking about, mm -hmm. their eyes kind of light up and say, yeah, we need that. Right. So that's exactly what we're trying to do then. Right. And so um, one of the interesting things that we were discussing before we stepped over here on the stage was some of the research that you're involved in and, and that City University is involved in. Uh, especially when it comes to anti-malware. Uh, I found it a little bit fascinating. If you want to 
uh, tell our viewers a little bit about what we were talking about. Sure. Um, within our set of cybersecurity sciences, we kind of have a broad brush approach to cybersecurity, but we tend to specialize because of our background in things that are quantitative, measurable, mm -hmm. sort of mathematically modelable, if you will. So one of the areas of research we've been looking at for a couple of years now is basically the effectiveness of tools. So a study that one of our researchers did was to look at existing malware products and take a known database of malware and see how effective they are at finding them. Now what we found is there's a wide range. And I'm sure some of the people around here will say yes and we're the best. And it's certainly true. We anonymized it all by the way so I can't give plugs. Right. But we looked at malware products, anti-malware products, and we found some were very good, some were not so good. Interestingly, we found no one product was perfect. Mm -hmm. But pick almost your favorite product, not even necessarily the best, and add in a couple of low-end free products, and you get measurably better defense than anything on its own. So it underscores the value of, even when we're talking about just one specific technology, maybe even layering that sort of defensive yeah. mechanism. Defense and diversity is a right. well-known sort of approach, but it turns out that we don't just mean different approaches and different things. Mm -hmm. For a single product, two different things developed independently mm -hmm. can have very different effects. Mm -hmm. And even if one is comparatively bad and cheap, it can still add overall to what you get. Oh, that's interesting, fascinating research. Uh, I, uh, I'm sure a bunch of people on the floor here would uh, would be interested to, to hear those results. They're welcome to come and talk to us about <laughs> it. Uh, I guess finally, talking about formulation of policy, this is part of the uh, Information Security Master's program? So within the program, we certainly study policy and its effect on business. Mm -hmm. How do you formulate a policy? What does a policy mean? What's a good policy? But because of our background, not so much on the course, but in our research activities, we're also interested in trying to get more science behind that. Mm -hmm. Um, a quote that I'm going to attribute to Chris Ensor from GCHQ, and I think it was actually, he said it. If we compared ourselves to the medical sciences, we're still in the sort of leeches and bandage stage. Uh -huh. We have some very good tools, and some people use them brilliantly, but there isn't all that much underlying science in how we set policy, how much difference policy makes. So one of the things we're very interested in is, how do you actually apply real science? Mathematical models, careful analysis, quantitative measurement to things that traditionally have been business and policy decision. Mm -hmm. And there's a long way to go before that's a solved problem, which makes it an interesting area of research. Why is it important to demonstrate uh, an ability to quantitatively analyze something like policy? Well, let me ask you a simple question. You undoubtedly, your organization, have a password policy. Mm -hmm. If anybody asks you why, you'll say, well, because it makes us secure. And if I ask you, if you change that policy from, say, whatever it currently is, to a 30-day expiration, does that make you more or less secure? Mm. And depending on who you are, you'll either give a straight-off-the-cuff answer or say, hmm, I'm not sure. If you give a straight-off-the-cuff answer and I say, prove it, I bet you can't. Mm. Because it's very difficult to prove those things. Mm. So we wrote a paper that'll be out this summer which actually shows that in some cases, you become more secure if you do that. If you assume a certain attacker profile, if you assume a certain kind of penetration attack. On the other hand, if you make different assumptions about the attacker, that policy may make you less secure. So it would be nice if we could actually objectively measure these things and do the right thing, not just, well, everybody else does it, we should too. So that's why we'd really like a strong scientific underpinning for these things. Well, excellent. Kevin Jones, City University of London, thank you for coming and joining us once again. You're welcome. Thank you.